Soul of the City. What's going on, St. Louis City fans? This is Soul of the City brought to you by First Touch Media. My name is Riley. Today we are joined by Ian and Chris. Uh, we had a midweek match this week on Wednesday against Ralph Salt Lake, which ended up 3-1 to one in Ralph Salt Lake's favor. A disappointing result at home, uh, but I think based off of the injuries that we've seen, it was to be expected. Um, guys, what did you think of that match? You go first. Okay. Yeah, um, we were horrible, <laughs> like horrendous. Probably the worst performance we've put in this year. Um, considering we went out and beat them 4-0 after what was not a convincing first half the last time that we played them and then dropped 4 on them in the second half. I was really disappointed by this result, but they are in a good stretch of form recently, up to seventh in the table. And uh, the boy Demir Krylock put on a uh, put on a masterclass. I'm not gonna lie, he was involved in everything, and he he went out there and did his thing. Yeah, the only thing that's a lock for me is uh, crying at this point because Demir really showed up in St. Louis and uh, smeared my whole night. <laughs> I came in there and I was like. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm optimistic. We're at home. I know we got some key players out. Blome in the lineup. So excited. Very surprised you know, by that, like, that he made it back. It, yeah, we said it on the last pod. I was like, there's no way they play him after all that travel. You're flying from. He all came in on the road. red eye, man. Dude, and I mean, like, I didn't even think he had a bad game. I, honestly, it wasn't his greatest game, but like, he didn't have Leuven in the midfield for support. Um, we'll get into all of it as we go through the chances. Spoiler alert, most of them are for Real Salt Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Blom definitely looked tired, and he didn't have what I still consider our most important player standing right next to him. So, yeah. I don't know. We we can talk about the lineup a little bit right now. So, we came out in the classic four two three one, which I'm glad we are still playing and yes. trying to make work with yep. what we have, even though we don't really have It's kind depth. of our only option. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, you think about there's no other formation you can play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, four three three may maybe, but there's still the midfield pieces don't want to. Yeah, they like work with Blum and Leuven yeah. both want to be central. Yeah. yeah, I have an interesting take for later in the episode. Okay, okay. so well, we saw Ostrock again in the cam roll. Spoiler I'm alert! Over, I'm over it. It's bad, and he's like, I I love Ostrock. I think he has a place on this team. He's not. It's definitely not playing the ten. Mm-mm. Yeah, I think it's it's, not, that's not his spot. I no. think that it's time to. Either roll out the four two three one with Miggy and Blome next to each other as a very defensive pairing, mm. and then Vasilev up in his like preferred yep. cam roll. Yep. Or we keep Vasilev in there to keep some stability in that role in the in the pairing of the two, and then put Aziel Jackson. I think that every time he's subbed on, he's looked more impressive to me than Ostrak. You took the words right out of my mouth with the idea of Miggy and Blome standing back there yeah. together because I think you can. I think Vasilev, like he really showed it in this game. He he had a pretty poor performance overall. That he does not want to play the eight. He does not want to play defense. He does not want to have to track back. He wants to be up the field and be creative. And bringing in Miggy, who's like he kind of does. He's not quite as big as Leuven. Mm-hmm. Similar build, and I feel like they he's both definitely not as big as Leuven. no no Leuven. Leuven like, yeah, Leuven is Leuven's built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miggy a child, but. But in a good way. I think that they both, like, I think Miggy does want to have, like, yes, he's kind of defensive-minded, but he also would like to press, not press, but, like, get up the pitch and make passes, make yeah. long balls, and, like, try to feed people through, which which we've seen Leuven do all season. And I think that would be an incredible pairing that Carnell should try. Yeah, I agree. Vasilev, despite playing the eight, has, we'll go through it, but he has a lot of our best sh- chances throughout yeah, the game. It's true. Um, so I guess just to get into it, we had in the first 10 minutes, um, Berkey plays a ground pass to Vasilev who's in that recessed role. He kind of gets caught in between. He like, doesn't know what he wants to do with it. He can feel the pressure on his back and he, and he just kind of, I don't know, not whiffs the ball, but just like misplays the ball. I think he was trying to play it back out to, to Nelson or Parker back, back there, but, uh, it just goes right to Diego Luna. And he gets an early shot on goal, but Bartlett's back there to clear it off the line. Um, so shaky out the gate. It was like yeah. we were sitting in the supporter section, and I, 
I honestly felt like it was a little weaker this this game. I felt that from home. Really? Yeah, because I couldn't I, tell if, if if it was just me or I was like, it's like nobody's like really as into it. Maybe it's a Wednesday it's night. That's I was thinking a different crowd, maybe like maybe because yeah. the ticket. I was looking at the ticket prices and they they were down substantially from what really? we normally see on like a Saturday night. I think that yeah, it has a lot to do with the fact that it's on a Wednesday. People are not hanging out drinking all day getting ready to yell and berate the other team <laughs> yeah where they're like out doing their job and then they have a season ticket in the sports section they're showing up and they're like go team i'm not drunk of, enough for this yeah the, even the uh the guys <laughs> who were down there like running running the chance like the guy on our side he was getting a little bit pissed off at the crowd he was like i'm gonna need you guys to like actually yell like if you're gonna be in this section, section you gotta, you gotta you like have show to cheer. Yep. so yep. And I, I feel him, you know what I mean? Like, it'd be frustrating. And, it, mm-hmm. and it, clearly the, the team didn't perform well. I don't think that was all in the crowd, but... Yeah, no. Um, but it does it does yeah. definitely help to have the consistent crowd factor where, like, if you're going to be there at the game, like, yeah, let's, get into know, it. let's know what's going on, let's be into it. And, yeah, like, that right. way th- there's one factor that's always the same, which is teams don't want to come here. Right, right. Uh, 12th minute, Blom. He wins the ball back in, like, the 25-yard mark and... It like bounces favorably for him, and I can't blame him for having a hit. He oh, I mean, absolutely. He definitely wasn't even close. It went straight into the supporter section. But um, I you, would I want that ball. I want yeah. to hit that. Yeah. You, you know? can tell he was trying to go for like the uh, you know the Luis Suarez goal where he just rips it. It's from way further out, and he uh-huh. ends up scoring it. But it's got the most insane amount of top spin top on spin. it, and yeah. it just like mm-hmm. whips it down and into the net. Mm-hmm. He was going for that. You could tell by the way that he kind of like laced it, but also flicked it a little bit with his foot. He, he just didn't get the spin. I on. like that he, because this is another game that he's had a few other games before this where he's starting to shoot and like the, the ball leaves his foot pretty quick. Like he's got a snap shot on him, and I, I'm excited that, that he's shooting and looking from range. I wonder if Carnell told him that he's got a little bit more offensive freedom. I don't know if that was a conversation that was had, but it just seemed like he was he was allowed to do a little bit more today and or last night. And um, I don't know. I don't think he was that bad. Everybody was dogging him. You guys said he didn't have a great game. No, I th- I didn't think he had I a just great game. He was off but color. he wasn't. He wa- yeah. He wasn't up to his normal scuff. Yeah, for I don't sure. really take too much into account what Fop Mob rates players. Like ultimately, we we go through yeah. ratings, but like it's more about what you watch on the pitch. And um, I don't know. I didn't think he was awful. I was like, about to say, part he definitely of needed Luvin next to him. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Four for four uh, on successful dribbles, and then he had eighty seven percent pass accuracy on thirty eight passes. Okay. I mean, he's he's yeah. he's still super involved. Fifty nine touches on the ball, like he's yeah. involved back there. But yeah, it, there were moments where he looked slow to to respond. To I never felt like he gave up a ball though, like in a dangerous area. There, who I'm gonna dog more than anybody is Tim Parker. I felt like didn't have the greatest game, um, and that goes into the, in the 14th minute. Tim Parker and the rest of the defense is like way up on our offensive half so they're like the whole defense is past half it felt like and he tries to settle a cleared ball and it just bounces off his shin just like no touch at all bounces right right to a real salt lake they're whoever's playing their their six position Mm -hmm. quick counter it's a 3v2 um musovsky plays a ball right across the top of the 18 krylik who had a great game overall dummies it so that uh, a running Diego Luna just gets a wide open look right at the top of the 18. Finishes it beautifully. Oh, man. It was a good finish. Like, Same. You know what? And that's an identical goal to Dallas's second when we played them for 40 minutes. Where a ball, where, where multiple defenders are out of position and a ball just. And Crylock does a little bit more than the Dallas players did in that instance. That leave was pretty disgusting. It was so nice. Like, yeah, it, it, it threw everybody off. He had three out of three goal involvements in this game. While yeah. he's not going to get an assist yeah. for this one, I mean, he he really did he create this goal. Work, yeah. um, You're starting to see a pattern of how people are getting to us, and it's that our wingbacks who are being given license to go up because we are not creative enough up top because Vasilev's not up there, and our wingers just aren't players that are creating a lot of chances – you're seeing these wingbacks get pulled up, which means that the center back that is paired with them on their side has to make up for that space. And then you're seeing like a, a 2v2 in the box whenever like Diego Luna is in behind and pulls a ball back across. Yep. You saw almost two identical goals where someone's running down the flank, plays low driven ball, it goes by somebody, or both guys are marking one dude because of a miscommunication, and then they score an easy goal. In that instance, it was really the entire back line. Yeah, was it was so it far was up. Like if you mm-hmm. watch the highlight, it's like 
everybody is past the half line. It's crazy. Yeah. So, and and Parker like runs even further into our offensive half to get to that ball, and he and does doesn't settle it. Just kind of like bounces off, throws his body. Yeah. Into so it. yeah, so th- like you're just left completely exposed. A three v two situation. Like I can't even really fault. I think it was Bartlett and maybe Nervitsky that yep. get back. Like yep. it's yeah. just And I I remember watching this counter break after I saw that it was Tim Parker who came out for yeah. the challenge and I was yeah. like this is going to be a goal. Are yeah. the, I'm always so frightened when teams are on the counter against us. I am like center sh- center backs need to just stay back. That's, like if we're giving our left and our left back and our right back the the license to move up and yeah. and play balls in, then like who's staying home yeah you know and like, even if parker wins that like it's just such a weird decision making choice i agree because he's still got vasilev and blum and yeah vasilev is like kind of behind this raw salt lake player who who mm-hmm. picks up tim parker's you know missed clearance like there's still other defensive pieces who are gonna track back like parker just needs to stay in his position just delay 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 yeah it's like what they tell you all the time when you're when you're playing defense so yeah yeah i don't know i mean we gave uh we <laughs> you're giving the wing back some some grief here but uh in the 21st minute, Nervinsky, he gets a ball recycled back out to him. He whips a nice, I thought it was a really beautiful cross in, but where what gets really gets me so hyped up is Gio got big on this, on yeah, this center like back. Climbs on this dude. Climbs on this dude's back. Well, first, before he even gets there, he's he's holding him down. Yeah. He's like holding his arms. It's a little bit dirty, but yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to do that. It's not dirty enough to where it would where be it called back. Yeah, they didn't yeah. Call it. Gets over the top of him, heads it in beautiful bro he's yeah. just feeling big he even had it in yeah. the celebration he's like flexing on him and then our classic points up to Joe klaus is that who the, he was pointing that's to? what i would like to think i thought it was yeah. his girl but i don't know i feel like this is for klaus always like, yeah i agree <laughs> it is always for klaus and yeah we're seeing geo kind of come into his own i think he's got three and three now four and four four and four mm. yeah i mean that's the best goal scoring form we have seen since Klaus has been out. Yeah. And he's really stepped up. Yeah. He, Definitely, he's yeah. stepped up a ton recently and it's sad to see that we can't get some results behind it. Yeah. Um, I saw after the game, he was, he was visibly upset on the bench. Oh yeah. He was, like head and hands. Yeah. And it's like, man, dude, like don't let it get you too down. Like we're, we're at a weird point in the season where both our designated players are out, where we still haven't even seen our number one center back play. Like, don't let this game get you down because ultimately like the team is we have more pieces that are going to make this team great yeah it's true but this comes back to that that question that we posed on one of the episodes where we were like start bench sell Leuven, berkey klaus mm. and I, I don't know i don't remember exactly who it was on the episode with me but we were arguing about whether you would you know berkey whatever yeah i, I was saying like you can Leuven find more value there. start yeah. That's what I was saying. Is Leuven has to start, and you can do whatever you want with the other two. And I think that we're gonna really struggle for the next, I don't know, four weeks while he's out. They say it's four weeks. Who know? I mean, could turn into twelve. Yeah, he could. It point. could also turn into two or three. Like it, it could get better faster. I know that we hate the whole uh, Klaus situation, and we're alluding to the fact that he could be out for longer. Yeah, people come back sooner from injuries too. Mm. So. Hopefully we get him back sooner because we desperately need him. We are seeing what this team looks like right now without him in it, and it is incredibly fragile. We're seeing center backs that are constantly out of position because we're not winning balls in the midfield. And part maybe of that's that, what it is. Yeah, maybe the center backs are feel like they have to push up. Oh, it's instructive, dude. You see Bartlett and Tim Parker running step up to the up. middle. I know. I see that more Super often, and we're kind of ste- getting cooked because stepping of it. Stepping up, and then there was another moment in this one. I think in the first half where. Both of them, where uh, John Nelson's nowhere to be, he he was probably up the pitch on some kind of offensive play, and Tim Barker and Lucas Bartlett are all the way over in our left corner, and it's just like, wh- what position are you folks playing? <laughs> are did we lose the map? Yeah. Like, what's going on? We lost the plot. They here. lost the plot. That's for sure. Oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah, uh, was... one thing that I thought was okay about not having Leuven. Leuven always takes our free kicks, right? Mm-hmm. And then, but clearly. Now that he's not there, Vasilev is our guy. And so he had a in the twenty seventh minute he had a he had a chance from a like thirty yards out. And yeah, I thought yeah. He had, it was a pretty good attempt. You Grazed know what I mean? the like, top net. Uh, I don't know if it got that close. I think it went side net. No, it hit top net. It hit top. top. Net. It okay. was very it was very close. From my section, it didn't. I couldn't see. There were all these flags in the way. Yeah, so, right. Ah, I got gotcha. you. Darn flags. Yeah. 
It's part of the supporter section. You got to live with it. Stroud gets his uh, obligatory yellow. Persi- participatory <laughs> yellow <laughs> on some stupid shit. Honestly, it was some I was stu- like, yeah. why, dude? Yeah. Like, just a late, just like shoulder checked the guy for no reason. The guy obviously embellished it and went down like yeah. a Right. What was that? Which L- Lofensen? Loffelson or something yeah. like yep, that. He yep. was on the ground a lot today, as well as Demir cry a lot. He was on the ground a <laughs> ton, bro. It's fitting for the name. Yeah. Mm. And then not even a minute, well, literally one minute later, uh, Ostrak had a bad yellow. Dude, that was a horrible oh challenge. God. The yeah. worst challenge oh, I've like, maybe seen. Maybe of the season. Yeah. It was yeah. like, he just goes in from, that was on Loffelson. Yep, yep. And he just comes in behind him like late as hell, just like, Super could late. Could have been a red. Like yeah, if, if he had his studs up froggy, or something. Yeah, like he's going off, dude. He yeah, got lucky. Was risky business. I, I thought we were lucky to get out of that with just a yellow. Yeah, I, I feel like I keep seeing that with Oshak. He is so slow to react to everything. He yep. is he's just not, you know, a step ahead of things. He's mm-hmm. a step behind, and you mm-hmm. see it whenever the ball gets played in for him. You see him realize it in real time and then run after yeah. it yeah rather than anticipating it and going after it yeah I, one thing uh, that, one thing that i do notice and it's not even just with ostrak but it's like giochini's like creative like flicks that he does they're never anticipated by anybody like no. nobody thinks that this dude is gonna like do a behind the like heel like, a back like, heel like, or like something. in the air like nobody's ever expecting it and while it's flashy and it very well could work there's just no anticipation. Like nobody knows when it's coming. I actually appreciate it. I think if I they think learn it, how to play, if they know he's going to do something like that, it's going to be like deadly. I well, agree. They're uh, not anticipating it. Neither is the defense. Yeah. So they just yeah. need to learn to be in open space whenever it's coming up to geo. And then we can make far better attacks go on the counter. I think that just comes with time. Like when you play with, with a player, yeah, you for learn a longer mm-hmm. period mm-hmm. of time. You guys just kind of have a clairvoyance with each other. So, the chem um, will be up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, speaking of, in the 35th minute, they had a nice link-up play uh, with Johnny Nelson. He passes the ball into Gio, who's more in a central role. Gio, like, it was a hard pass from Johnny Nelson, and Gio does well to, like, feather it right to Vasilev, feet. who catches it on it. It's like another half volley, but he's on his right foot, not his dominant left foot. Mm-hmm. Um, still another, like, rising shot that, that just went past the right post. So Yeah. I thought it was a good chance, and that's well. And in that moment, Giochini like uh, almost apologizes to Vasilev, which I was confused about because I was like, he kind of left that yes. real good for oh yeah for Vasilev. Like, On there's the a team. clear yeah clear space in between the center backs. Like, yeah, I thought it was a great. I thought that was a great opportunity. Yeah, Vasilev getting involved in the attack again, even though he's playing that the deeper eight position. But that pretty much took us into half. Um, and I was the guy who I was with. He was saying basically. It looks like we're playing after that 35 minute mark. He was like, it looks like we're playing for the half. Like we're just trying to get through this. Um, yeah. And I kind of agree yeah. at that point we were just trying to survive and still happy to make it into the halftime one, one, you feel like in this game, there's, there's going to be another opportunity for St. Louis to put away and, and potentially win the game. I yeah. Mean, you, you would think that, um, I mean, going in for like right off the gate, we get kicked in the mouth 47th minute Diego Luna passes to Mikhail Ramirez who came on at half or just after half. Um, who in the he has a nice little back heel flick to Demir yep. Krylak, who's slots a ball home. He actually uh, megged Bartlett on that. Yeah, I did see that. Goal. And it was side net, just on the side of the corner. I was like, damn, dude, they just yeah. really just gave it up. At the end of the day, these chances, while they're 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 okay chances, but they're not crazy wide open goal or anything like that. Krylak was finishing the hell out of those chances the 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 xg of this game is one to 0.7 there were no clear-cut really great goal scoring opportunities he's just tucking stuff in the side net Mm -hmm. like it is hard to stop that i can't blame berkey for any of it really just great shots yeah just insane finishing finishing. yeah Yeah. i mean the the link up play it was such it was nice it's exactly what you want to see as a coach. You're like you play these little small side games, right? Some that, rondo. Yeah, yeah, so that you're always having the, the quick one two passes, and they just did that right in our box through our defenders. Easy money, easy clap. I do wonder because Blom did have some involvement and kind of takes the ball from Luna at one point in this, but it doesn't quite make it far away. I do wonder if you know Blom is here in St. Louis all week. If maybe he's got a little more, I think a little we're asking, more in him. To, we're asking a lot out of that situation. We definitely like are. he definitely. It's like one of those things where Luna like loses the handle a bit and it just like re- reflex to Blom and he like it. It comes to him too fast. He's not able to like settle it. Luna yeah. gets back up, plays that ball in. It, yeah, 
honestly, just hats off to Real Salt Lake on that goal. So. Yeah. yeah, no, it was beautiful. Diego so, Luna, like, very exciting U.S. men's national team product. He's yeah. very small, but he's U20. rapid. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, rapid, and his, his deliveries were great. His finishing was great. He he looked a very talented player tonight yeah. Yeah. for U20, and he doesn't look 20. That dude looks like he's 30. Yeah, <laughs> I don't that, know if it's the neck tattoos or what, but he does yeah. not look U20. He does not. Uh, Check his birth certificate. Yeah, there were a few other chances, but they weren't really for cities in City's favor. Pablo Ruiz had a shot. Berkey had a nice. He got down on the ground to force a good save in the 52nd. Geo plays Stroud in in the 64th. You guys mm-hmm. remember that chance? Yep. Was like it was like a real close to the. He didn't have much of an angle, but you kind of hope he puts more pace on it. I don't know. It tough finish either way. I honestly think that's the chance. I'm going to be mean to Stroud here and okay. say that if I am Geo and I see Stroud on my left or I see the shot that I have face before me, I'm going to back myself to hit that. But yeah. there's a defender in front of Geo. I think he's a little off to the left. Like, yeah. I think Geo, if he wants to, can maybe bend that far post. Maybe fake it, fake the pass, and then... or Yeah, yeah. try to Cut do inside. something. Egoist. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, he the needs egoist move. The, so, one of the commentators said it and was, I think that they said that he was being too selfless. Yes. You think? I, I agree. I think he is a playmaker by nature, which is why he needs to be in a more reserved role. But while he's playing that that nine, that true top player, he Goals. needs to just hit those, bro. Goals. Like Especially when you have four in your last four. You got to hit that, man. Yeah. I, I think you have to. Because Stroud was poor. Very poor. Yeah. He's a work rate, work rate yes. merchant. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, I mean, 65th minute, Parker bodies Mikel Ramirez out on the <laughs> right side, doesn't get the ball. Ball rolls past both of them. Uh, Andrew Brody, their left back, overlaps, picks the ball up in stride, drives straight to the touchline, plays a ball back out, like from the touchline back to the 18. Krylik finishes it between Barlin and Nelson. 3-1. Just like another great finish near post, just, but it just looked so free. That's GG what like no that's what hurts the most is like because there's two defenders marking the guy that's cl- like at the penalty spot. Basically. Well, so what like what happens is Diego Luna does a great job of like dropping back to receive the pass in the middle of the field, and Nervitsky sees it because Alm is right there on the player with the ball. Luna's coming back to receive it in the middle of the park. Nervitsky picks his head up and sees that Luna has moved. And his first instinct always is like, let me go press this guy. Let me go get on him, even though he's at... That's what they're told to do, though. I know, but it's like, just stay where you're at, man. Like, but it's the press. They're playing the press. That's, but while, while they're on attack, like, while they're... Uh, I just can't see how... Jake just needs to stay in his ground there, in my opinion, because instead he's coming all the way out to make a half-baked challenge. He doesn't even ever make it to Luna. Mm-hmm. He was so he was so disjointed from this play that it's like it doesn't even make sense for him to come out and leave his position. For what? Like what did he what did he no, get out I of it? No, I hear you. I hear that it's like like I understand that like we are press mentality, but like sometimes keeping the shape is also very important. No, I yeah. I hear you. I think that there's something to be said about like playing to the philosophy of the press and then also just like common sense and feel of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? understanding moments are what make the game. Right. Just, and this whole game you see what you just laid out the whole time. We talked about yep. the center backs like jumping forward, like the yep. wing backs jumping forward to, to press. Everyone's right? trying to anticipate which is what they're told to do. Yeah. And then in the in the post game I was like like sometimes I know that they have to, like, especially the coach has to be, like, politically correct and be like, well, you know, I think our, our lads did pretty well today. Like, you know what I mean? And, like, yeah. that's the St. Louis thing. Like, you're not, you shouldn't throw players under the bus. Yeah, he's going to stand by his players. Ali Marmel, don't be throwing players under the bus. Mm. But that being said, he pointed out, like, Carnell pointed out the positives. He was like, well, we had our, like, our game high in defensive turnovers. And I was right. like, all right, you're, uh, I mean, if you're going to chop up stats like that, that's that's cool. Yeah, I mean, right. you can cherry pick them to was, make yourself look good. Right. Well, it that's, was three to one, that's bro. A, that's an interesting one. question because, like, you know that, like, you know, he's coming off the field into the press box. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get too conspiratorial here. But what if, <laughs> what if, what if there's some higher St. Louis City being that's like, Hey, bro, here's a good stat from the game. Go take that into the press conference. and uh, I think it's just him. Know. I think he's just a positive yeah. guy. He wants to focus on the positives and move on, right? Yeah. But because, like, ultimately, he's got a point. Like, what's the point of focusing on the negatives? Sometimes you got to embrace your shadow. And, mm-hmm. and right now, 
We got we kind of suck. We we kind of <laughs> we just don't have the the facilities for that, mate. We got right. we got to change it up a little bit. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean, can't yeah. be jumping at balls. So I mean, yeah, we're just missing everything important. Louvin. In our, yeah, we're missing Louvin. We're missing and Louvin, that, and we're missing Klaus. And yeah. Nielsen's yet to come back. Like, yeah. and, and Hebert's out for this game. Like I think that Hebert true. has to start in the middle. From now on, you think? I think that Parker and Bartlett is just a bad pairing. They both want to make challenges way too high up the field. I think that was an instruction. I really do. I I think think it is too, but I think Hebert understands the game more. I think Parker's just like bull in a china shop. I'm gonna go win this header. He is a bull, dude. That's part of why I kind of I love him is because he's kind of like embrace it, the enforcer. But then you're like, man, I need a little bit of need a little bit of brains with the brawn. You know what I mean? It's true. It's true. And towards the end of the game, there was one moment where I think maybe a, a raw salt lake player like either clips him in the face or like kind of and tim parker's taking like a minute to like complain to the referee and it's like like, we're down two goals let's go get a goal man he wasn't just complaining he was he was saying something yeah (laughs) fun i think is what they call it yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) fun you yeah that's about all i had for that game it was i mean here's the thing i showed up and i was like you know it's a wednesday i got work tomorrow i'm not gonna drink we go down a goal and i'm like I'll get a beer. And, and <laughs> then, then we tie it up. I come back. Like, we tie it up. I'm like, all right, all right. We're all good. We're all good. I go into the half, and I'm like, this would be it, man. I got I to gotta wake up. Responsible adult. They score again. I'll get another beer. <laughs> <laughs> they score again. I'll get another, another beer. beer. Oh, it's just kind of how it Maybe is. Too. By the end of it, you're just like, man, like I'm drunk and sad. What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> hop on the Metrolink. Head home. Right. <laughs> What's cracking at BPV? Like, Because I need something to cheer me up. <laughs> Golly, dude. And so there's just nothing. It was tough to watch the rest of that game because yeah. we didn't have a whole lot of chances. After the yeah. 64th, I was kind of like, all right. Look, every week we move closer to getting players back. So yeah. that's that's the positive. To time. be Carnell in this situation, we're just passing time yeah. until yeah. we get the best players on our team back in our lineup. And I want to I want to leave this on you guys. And we kind of talked about it at the beginning of the episode, Ian, you kind of you kind of squanched my idea. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> but my question was like in this maybe in this Raw Salt Lake game or in the upcoming Quakes game, What's like a like a out there sub that you would want to see? Because at this point, like you guys said, we're just burning time. Like we're waiting for our good players to come back. What what kind of rotations would you guys want to see from maybe some players we haven't seen so far? Ezio Jackson. I want to see him get more minutes. I don't know. You said put him in at the ten position, and I'm like, I could see it, but also, I don't. I don't feel like I've seen enough of him yet to like. The ten that position is so pivotal, especially in the well, that's MLS. Like yeah. you saw Hani Mukhtar run it. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you see you see Vasilev when he's allowed to play that position runs it. Mm-hmm. You see how pivotal it is, and I just I don't know if I don't know if his yeah. Azio Jackson has it in. I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm yeah. just saying like I think that it could have been a tactical adjustment for the Wednesday game because we had just played a Saturday game. I want to see Miggy and Blome and then Vasilev back in his preferred position. Mm-hmm. And then I I want to see the the wingbacks with Hebert in the middle somewhere. I don't care. Bartlett, Parker, doesn't matter. I want Hebert in the middle. I think he's our most solid one-on-one and understanding the play defender. And to not have him in the middle and to have him out on the wing trying to make challenges that he doesn't really need to make, just let Nerwinski and Nelson do that. I, yep. I think that we go back to the basics of like the beginning of the mm-hmm. season and put Hebert back in the middle. Yeah, I would like to see one substitute St. Louis made last night that I really enjoyed was Josh Yarrow. And I feel like throughout the season, I've been kind of, eh, I don't really know. But what he did was the second he subbed on, he started calling out names and like pointing at people and saying, mm-hmm. this is your man, this is my man, which I feel like I did not see very much at all. There was very little defensive communication. I would like to see him... Maybe try to take right back. Maybe start over Jake Nervitsky, or honestly, maybe over Parker or Bartlett in this game. Like, interesting. I think. Give I think the, you give switch the, something up. Give the city two lad a shout. Yeah, I What's agree. Up? I mean, he seems like a a pretty natural leader. Yeah. So so that's something valuable for sure, and and a competent defender. We haven't seen him for a full ninety. It's true. Against you know. The MLS is best, and that's kind of what we're going to come up against this weekend. It's true. I feel like he's one who is really wanting to prove his worth at the first team level. Like, yeah. he's one who's been like he, you know, total city two guy the through and through who wants that first team call up. And I know if he gets it, he's going to put 
110% into it. Yeah. So I'd be excited by him. I think before we get into the San Jose stuff, I got some beef with Carnell because in the last few games, we've gone down early in the second half. And you see him kind of let the players that are already down like continue playing and making the wrong substitutions. So he's not making them early and he's making bad substitutions. What do you think was the wrong sub in Celio the last game? looked like the better of the two wingers. Stroud looked bad. And mm. Celio, I think, probably played one of the better performances I've seen from him recently. He looked like he was whipping in dangerous balls, like low-driven balls that we mm-hmm. don't see a lot from our other wingers. And he took him off instead of Stroud, who got a yellow in the 37th minute. Like, Stroud is usually coming off very early. Yeah. And then he proceeds to let the game keep going when we just went down 3-1 in the 66th minute. Don't wait until the 80th minute to make offensive substitutions. Put Klein and Jensen into the game instantly. We go down 3-1. These guys aren't going to change it. Just put someone in. I, I feel inclined to agree with you. And the other one was like... The first substitution that we made was Indy, and I know he had a really poor game, but like we said, some of the best chances we had in this game came from Indy, and I feel like subbing him off, uh, who, did he, who did he sub off for? Um, uh, I think Alm came in, right? That was for Pompeo. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, I'll find it. I'm trying to remember what the change was, because it felt, it felt like... It was Aziel Jackson for Indiana Vassal. Okay, that's yeah. what it was. 69th minute. That's where I was so that feeling was an like... Early, that was an earlier sub. Yeah. I, I agree with you, Ian. Like, it needs to happen after the after we go down 3-1, like 65th minute. That's yeah. when you see Pep make all his moves. Dude, yeah. 65th, like Follow 80th the minute. Well, and he was, doing, he was doing it consistently at the beginning of the I season. I know, and yeah. he was. Where and it was I don't like know. both of the wingers yeah. coming off at the 65th week in week out for like six weeks yeah. and i don't understand what has changed to make him think that the 80th minute when you have max 15 minutes left of game time is enough time to make an impact on a match when it's going to take you maybe half of that time to even get a touch on the ball like you are not going to be able to feel your way into a game with that amount of time i I'm think it's just to silly agree with you yep I think it was just like the it was josh yarrow johnny klein isak jensen those are like the young boys right so he didn't want to put he wanted to he wanted everybody to feel like it was our best out there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? For most of that game. So yeah. he, he brings all those guys on in the 80th. Um, we're just we're just low on players right now. We are. Like yeah. Rasmus Alm, he's our best guy off the bench, and he came in early. So yeah. that, like, I can't give Carnell too much stick. I, I agree he's got to make subs early. But he, he made the good subs, like the... The lock subs, right? Early, mm. he made him at 64th I minute. I still think Celio is not the right sub in that in that yeah. specific. I instance. agree. I think let him sub cook Stroud. Stroud and Oshak both come off the field. <clears throat> they both had a bad night. I it think he just is. likes to keep Alm on the right side, and that would make it, sense, right? Because yeah. Celio was on the left in this one. No, no Celio, Celio was, was on the right. right. Really? Stroud was on the left. So line. that's what Stroud was on the left, and that's typically where oh, Stroud yeah, you're plays. Right. Yep, yep. So I think that probably goes. That probably factors into it. And then you're like, you think about it, you're like, all right, well. Stroud work rate merchant like he is putting in he's putting in his shift like he is pressing who like who would you bring on for him in his place to like really press who like is Isak Jensen gonna press like that I mean dude he's got better legs at that point so yeah Uh, you saw him come into the game last night and press it wasn't 10 minutes pretty yeah yeah. he's got give him 25 minutes I'm down to just bust the walls down and just let let any of these young guys. If you're down in. by two, you might as well. That's what yeah, I'm, I'm saying. Like, there's you. no yeah. point in letting it go until the 80th minute when we're already down by two goals. Something's got to change. Yeah. Um, so this weekend we're playing we- fifth place San Jose Earthquakes, who we beat last time they came to St. Louis. What was that? Three nil. Three nil. Yeah. Yep. No, do we yep. give up a goal? No, nope. it was two. Three nil. I want to say it was two. I just nil. did a uh, the match up? day review. I remember every single score. It was three okay. nil, guaranteed. Go ahead if you want to look it up. You can. But Check I'm out just... our thread on Twitter. Riley put in a lot of work on that, and I think it's pretty funny. Uh, the responses we've gotten are actually hilarious from yeah. yep. Chicago and the likes of who else? Sporting. A few other sporting. Spots, yeah. It's been yeah. pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, but yeah, I'm not gonna I lie. Read, <laughs> I I literally just opened up Twitter and read some stupid. I just go look on Twitter. Twitter's a cesspool, but we yeah. that's the one we play in. So yes. um, Christian Espinoza, looking like the dangerous man he is per usual. Eight goals, six assists in 19 matches. He is leading the MLS with key passes. He's got 46 key passes. So he plays on the right wing. Yes, he yes. does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember him. Yeah. I mean, he's a beast. I, I think that 
they are a very dangerous team. They are one of the teams that I could see winning the cup just because if they get into a good run of form, they are extremely dangerous. They went to Seattle, got a result. Yep, LAFC, um, I believe. Yep, also a result against LAFC. They are coming off some a pretty poor result. They just lost to Houston 4-1. Mm. Houston's kind of in form, though. They are in form. Yeah, they've I turned mean, it around since us. They really have. Yeah, yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, I think it's because I shouted dumpster fire Dynamo at their players too long, and they were like, you know what? I cannot I can't live deal with, with this. that anymore. Mm-mm. That kid who yelled at us called us a dumpster fire. Yeah, I, I just can't deal with it. We better get in the training pitch. Hey, who, All right. hey, who are you calling kid? <laughs> um, Ibobasi has seven goals, two assists, 33 shots. Christian Espinoza, we already went through him. Mm-hmm. Uh, we like to talk about Cade Cow. He has not done a whole lot. <laughs> no, he hasn't. He had a call up, so he's not going to be there this weekend. He's uh, he's on the Gold Cup squad, and they play at nine on Saturday, and we play at seven thirty. Or is this actually this is actually in San Jose? Is it not? Yep. So it'll be probably nine thirty yeah. here. Yeah. Sick. It'll be I, up all night. I cannot stand these Western like super West Coast teams. They don't <laughs> respect Central Standard Time. They don't respect Eastern Standard Time. Put a little more respect. Start the game at 8.30 down there, or at 6.30 down there. What's the big deal? They can't make it, bro. They got traffic they got to deal it's with. It's Saturday. Okay, that's true. Just start your day one hour earlier. I'm looking at Cade Cowell's photo. He looks like he could be like Paul Bunyan's son or something. Yeah, <laughs> he's, like, he's just <laughs> straight out of the mountains. I don't he know is what a character. his deal is. <laughs> Forged by the forests, yeah. that's for sure. Um, What do you guys want to see? I mean, you guys have already said it. Yeah. Miggy Blom as the ultra defensive midfielding pairing and then throw Vasilev back up top. I yes. love it. I think that solves our problems and we're going to win. Let's go. I think that's, what, I think that's all we need. I Start sure home. hope you're right about the parody league because boy, do we need it. Dude, we got yeah. We need a win. Big we time. do need a win. I like three in a row would hurt. It's going to feel good to get any points out of these upcoming it's results. True. It's so true. Even draws. I will slap a smile on my face and yeah. say, thank you very much. Cause we're hurting. We're yeah. just, we are hurting. So. Big time. We did an interview early on in the season with uh, the kid that was on the academy team outside of the stadium, and he was like, I think we're going to do really well early on, and then we're going to get to the middle of the season and kind of struggle. Yeah. And so far, I think his predictions have been pretty spot on. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, a lot of people were saying that. Alexi Lawless was saying that at the beginning of the season. He's like, the way they want to play is high press, and we'll see how that how that goes throughout Dude, the I whole hate season. Lallis. Yeah, I know. He's terrible. Get him off the internet. Bro. But, <laughs> again, to go full circle Cancel. on Taylor Twelman. I was about to pull that. Are you talking Where about his tweets? I'm re- pulling that up right Yeah, now. well, so he he brought up the, the idea because he you know did his classic Taylor Twelman commenting on a St. Louis City game. Yeah. And in the replies, he was talking about how Klaus – and Leuven could both be bought down. Yeah, with total and we, allocation and we could, funds. We could bring in three new DPs if we really felt like it. Yeah, we're second. We're second lowest in terms of spending. It's out there, man. He said, "Simple. Yeah, but- Look at the salaries and their cap hit. They are the definition of TAM players. If you." want to build a roster in a certain way SDL has the second lowest payroll the numbers don't lie i'm just telling you the ways it can improve i don't think it happens this year you can just smell taylor twelman's breath when he's when i read that <laughs> <laughs> <She's> dude just, <laughs> i agree in the fact that i don't see it happening this year yeah it, i i don't think that lutz and carnell would necessarily communicate that to us if they were even like looking at players to buy or anything like that i don't think they would communicate it i think it would all be done silently and we would have a new player and we'd wake up one morning and be like whoa we just bought someone who's this guy yeah i think that that's honestly good for an organization because you don't want to have competition you want to keep things kind of behind your own doors but it sucks because we could really use some reinforcements in both the wing back position the winger position and maybe a midfielder mm-hmm. i mean and kind of striker too right like yeah i mean if we're gonna get klaus back we won't really need that reinforcement it's true it's and very true we just need better midfielders i think because once one of our top three choices goes down Blom, leuven or vasilev mm-hmm. you see a giant drop off in production in whatever their produ- position was yep um Wingers, I just I want to see a winger that will score some goals. I want to see someone like Diego Luna who's making late runs into the box and like actually hitting something. Because I feel like we've seen a few goals from Stroud and a few goals from Alm, but they're not that good of finishers, mm-hmm. and we need that up top more than ever. 
they just are little gnats, man. They provide chaos, yeah. and I yeah. I'm not gonna ask them to do more than that. You know, what I mean, they're they're here to press. They're here to they're here to provide with. Yep. Um, I'm looking at a target allocation money. I I kind of hate the MLS the way it's all set up. It should just be like, can we just let this capitalist thing run in America? No, not if, if it, it removes the salary cap. Dude, it's kind of it's the most annoying thing. It's worse than baseball. Like I thought baseball was crazy with other arbitration rules. They got target allocation money, very similar to uh, GAM. Which is general, general allocation, allocation money. money. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the biggest difference is the target allocation money has to be used for players that are intended to be making more than the league maximum salary when joining the MLS. Mm. In other words, like when we sign Luvin, Luvin to a $3 million contract yeah. and that puts us over or he is making over the maximum salary and would be a DP, we can use some of our target allocation money towards his salary to and buy he down buy the DP down. salary. And he won't yeah. be a DP. But there's mm. another caveat there. If the ta- if the target allocation money is used in that way, where you buy down a designated player's salary, the the team, which Leuven, not a designated player, so bad example. Yes, bad yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've messed that up before. Yeah, so um, the team Plays like it, a DP. Yeah, the team must then use the new designated player at an investment greater than or equal to the player losing the DP designation. So let's say we used our TAM money to buy Klaus, right? Yeah. An actual designated player. Right. We buy him down. Okay. Then we have to use... Team must then sign a designated player at an investment greater than or equal to the player losing the designated player player designation yeah just so list the teams on the nasdaq already dude just it's, free market it's so God, it's it. so convoluted mls no, please no. just like it's cool i like that it's unique and i oh, like it's that cool. i'm paying messy salary every time i buy a beer at city park get the <sighs> fuck out of here i mean I'm so dumb. i'd feel man, better if Messi it's good was for the league us. i hope that he does great but i hope inter miami suck <laughs> they won't they got busquets too like it's just Dude, Busquets can't really move anymore. I mean, I you know, think, you I know think it's Busquets, the MLS, but dude, like, brother, let's be pinging balls to Messi and it's game if, over. Dude, is Busquets' legacy destroyed if Hany Mukhtar just absolutely cooks he him? Cooks him? Yeah. People on people, Nashville Twitter sounds off when it comes to this MLS move. They love Hany Mukhtar down there. They think he's better than Messi and he's going to show him up. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let I think Hany Mukhtar could definitely end Sergio Busquets' career. Not in like an injury way, just like an embarrassment. Yeah. So just to be clear, Leuven and Klaus are our designated God, players. Dude. Berkey is the one that is not a designated how player. That, how is that? Is but that Berkey, that's how yes, is that? Yes, but Berkey's our highest I'm on the, paid. What do you mean? Doesn't he, doesn't he have the biggest contract with us? No, Berkey? I think he's just the highest paid goalkeeper in the league. Oh, okay. Let's get our DPs right. Jeez. Yeah, Jesus. I have it right here. So Jesus you see Christ. Klaus, right. designated player, and Leuven, also designated player. So, Sorry, we're amateurs. Apparently, no. It's just it, it, it is kind of difficult to keep up with at times, and it's not like easy to understand yeah, either. These the, are, the MLS does yeah. not make it fun to like learn no. about their league's financials or anything like no, that. No, get an accounting degree. Just to yeah, seriously. Right, it's, Jesus, it's I still don't even know. <laughs> I, I all I know is that we should sign some players because we don't really spend a lot of money, and that's fine to be kind of frugal in that way and not pay people a bunch of money to set the standard low hey man second in the west and we got the one of the lowest payrolls the second lowest payroll feels in the league. Good. that's yeah. very great yep. that is that is great all right score predictions what do you got and then we'll um, wrap it up and get out of here i'm gonna have to say i'm just gonna hope and pray for 2-2 away in san jose i'm just gonna cross my fingers i don't know how we get two goals i'm gonna say 1-1 optimistic mm. i got 2-0 loss Ooh. Mm. we're taking an l i think we're gonna That's slide dangerous. for a little bit yeah. honestly i yeah. think Leuven needs to come back and then hopefully klaus and him come back at the same time and nielsen and we'll just have like the fucking avengers oh speaking of avengers uh the mls <laughs> <laughs> the mls has just announced yet another league-wide kit collaboration uh. i asked it on twitter we got around 100 votes on this poll let's go yeah. Uh, MLS wide sponsored kits or individual third kits? Individual. Let's go. Individual third kits won by a ton, didn't it? it, it was, oh my god, yeah. it was ninety five to five yeah. percent. Nobody wants these league wide. Dude, we the, want one extra kit for our home club. Well, I think you just do the third kits for individual clubs, and then you also do the yeah. the league wide ones when you have things like 
the uh, the Earth Day kits and stuff like that. Like Sound you, off on Twitter, but I thought those Earth Day kits were disgusting. Horrible. I thought they were awful. Ugh, I don't trying think to watch, awful. trying to watch our brand new team play in teal made me sick to my stomach. <laughs> I, was I will say, actually, I, St. Louis is not a teal city. Ugh. Well, I like I like well, that dark blue one a lot better than I like the teal one. But I, I don't think they were horrible. They yeah. look like what you wear to go to the beach if you don't want to get sunburned. They look like what you wear, what surfers wear when they don't want to get sunburned. I just. It's not important, but I hate them. Yeah. Swim, Surfers? Swim, 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 <laughs> no, the swim shirt. No, swim attire. <laughs> swim shirts. Take, my, t- take your shirt off. Take, take your clothes swim. off. <laughs> Let All the right. sun kiss your skin like a real person. If you want more base takes, uh, talk to Riley on Twitter. He is running the show. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you on Sunday. Peace. Love you guys. Peace out. Thank you for watching this episode of Soul of the City, brought to you by First Touch Media and Anchor FM. Make sure to check us out on YouTube at First Touch Media and all of our socials are at First Touch 314. Thank you for watching.